This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And it is a beautiful day. We need a little rain again, but I'm not complaining. We had a delightful weekend, an exciting time with our rummage sale and luncheon. Who wants to announce? Counting, is, it's close to $1,100. I know it's over 1000 clear. Oh, clear. This is clear. For so local they, missions uh, and food pantry. That was wonderful. And we do want to thank everybody, everybody who helped. I think everybody in here was there. It was great. Marla has something else. So, I'm going to make some more money this morning. I have a couple of sausage for sale. There's five in a package, and you get five buns for $15. So, she means you get the Polish and the bun. Right. Just the bun. They're Heinkel's. They're Heinkel's Polish sausage, so they're the best. Yep. And anybody at the church wants to go down into the running room and look for anything, you're welcome to. We're going to pack the rest up this week and take it in for um, to local missions. Um, it was really fun. And another thing is, uh, some of us need a new uh, bridge shirt, so this has a list, and we have to have 10 in order So are we going to do them the same? Oh, okay, we should look at it and we know that the ones that we did, if we do those again, they run really small. So if anybody needs a shirt and is well, any, smaller than me. <laughs> any style, right. Um, just in the blue, you know, with the, you know, you get any style you want, I think. Mm -hmm. I did a polo and I got a large which should be, that's what I normally wear and it, it's too small, didn't fit. And we thought maybe too, um, when we get the t-shirts done, we're thinking about, we want aprons that have the bridge on it. Yes. Uh, right. For all of us, so we could all of us wear them. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, so, you know, Denise has got the list for that. And again, I want to thank everybody. We work so well together, all of us. The <coughs> Linda and Doris and uh, Judy. Judy. Judy and, and Kay was here. And <laughs> Brenda. Todd came, Richard, Betty. Linda was there. We had a good time doing it. Yes. It was wonderful. Thank you all. <laughs> yes, Betty was a ham lady. We had a job for everybody. Everybody pitched in. It was wonderful. Do we have any other announcements today? Yeah, we had a Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Wow. Abel and join in seeing our singing our opening hymn number 144 this is my father's world If you'll join with me responsibly in our call to worship. Oh, give thanks to the Lord with your whole heart. On the day I called, you answered me. God's steadfast love endures forever. Thanks be to God. Our morning invocation. God of days, we praise your name, for your grace sustains us. We wait for you, Lord. For your, word, for your word strengthens us. Our outer nature is wasting away day by day, but our inner nature is being renewed by your daily bread. Grant us the eyes to see what cannot be seen and to gaze on what is eternal. May we reveal in your work 
and be a visible witness of your invisible kingdom. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Let us confess our sins, for God has already forgiven us and is calling us to return to the Lord. Join me in our prayer of confession. Gracious God, have mercy on us, for we have failed to be faithful to you, though you have been faithful to us. Show us your wisdom, but we prefer to go our Broken relationships with you and one another have created poverty in us and our neighbors. In your mercy, reconcile us to you and one another for the work of justice, peace, and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Sisters and brothers, do not lose heart. When we call, God hears us. When we confess, God forgives us. We believe and so we proclaim in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Now we have a moment for our joys and concerns. My joy is to be with you this morning and Pastor Bob has taken his first Sunday off in a year and a half. So I hope they're having a good day. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be with you to share this time. We've had a few prayers shared with us that I'd like to start. Uh, we asked, I asked to keep Richard and Shirley Wallace and family in your prayers. Richard is back home. Uh, I understand he is hospice in um, and not doing well. So Shirley tells me he will stay home. Um, Jerry Mahoney family, Jerry Mahoney, I understand passed away this week. Keep them in our prayers. Donna King is having surgery on Wednesday. We pray that, that she has a good outcome and everything goes smoothly. So we'll think of Denise as well and uh, keep Donna in our prayers. Uh, Kay Wallace is struggling with a foot issue and has had this massive immobilizing cast on her foot, which has given her problems. So we want to keep her in prayer and hopefully she'll get um, a, good, a good outcome this week when that comes off, hopefully. Do we have any other joys this morning? Other than we had a wonderful weekend with our uh, fundraiser, rummage sale, and luncheon. It's delightful. Marla? Um, uh, Joy, Janet will be 95 on Tuesday. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, Here dear prayers. prayers. Any other joys or concerns this morning? Yes. Wow. <laughs> so now she stands up in her crib when she does not want to go to sleep and she yells out to her mommy. And her mommy just goes in and lays her down. <laughs> but she's a good sleeper, so she finally has that cue. But um, yeah, she's just a joy for us. And, um, you know, we go down there every chance we can get to just Yeah. <laughs> what a blessing. Wow. Awesome. We're going to look down at the floor and go, where do you come from? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Linda. Ah. 
I see. Keep him in prayer. <clears throat> we'll keep that in prayer too. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Any others? Join with me in prayer. Lord God, who triumphed over sin and death, we confess to you our sometimes casual disbelief. We don't put you first in all things, and our distractions keep us from seeing you. Forgive us, we pray, in this time of worship. Pardon us from all that would keep us from you and from your will for our lives. Help us move beyond ourselves that we might be courageous in our witness to your love as we seek to be your heart, your hands, and your feet. Empower us to trust your most Holy Spirit as it seeks to lead us to do what we may not want to do in places that we fear to go. Lord, we lift up all those situations spoken and unspoken today those who feel alone or forgotten, those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, and those who do not know the joy of your salvation. Help them to know that they are not alone, that you are with them. Be with our world leaders, our servicemen and women around the world in places of turmoil and strife. We thank you for the many blessings and gifts you have bestowed upon us. Thank you for this marvelous gift of life and the gift of your Son. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Holy God, let your spirit now move in us to turn us away from the temporary and move us to your eternal love made visible in Jesus Christ. In whose, names we, who, in whose name we pray, amen. Our next hymn is number 430, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee.
my mother's favorite hymn. Thank you, Pam. This morning's gospel reading is from the, from the third chapter of Mark, beginning at the 20th verse. Then Jesus entered a house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, he's out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, he's possessed by Beelzebub. By the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. So Jesus called them and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If him, and if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand and his end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can rob his house. I tell you the truth, all the sins and blasphemies of men will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. He is guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying that he has an evil spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and brothers? he asked. Then he looked at those who seated, at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, Mark sure gives us a lot to work with in this scripture reading. Um, he records more miracles than does any other gospel. And in this chapter, the opposition against Jesus is mounting. He's broken with several traditions that stood in the way of reaching out to the needy and the lost. You recall he was teaching in synagogues and healing the crippled and the demon possessed. He socialized with tax collectors, prostitutes, and sinners. He and his disciples didn't observe fast days. The biggest thing of all, he claimed to be Lord of the Sabbath. All these things put him in conflict with the scribes and Pharisees, polarizing him and his followers on one side and the religious governing authorities on the other. The scribes and Pharisees' doctrines and regulations gave them authority and control, but also gave them a false sense of God's approval. And then here comes Jesus way out of step with their rules and regulations. But he's gathering widespread approval so they begin to view Jesus as an enemy who must be destroyed. Crowds gathered and Jesus and his disciples weren't even able to take a meal. The teachers of the law proclaimed Jesus was himself possessed. They did not believe Jesus was God's son and working in accordance with God's power. So they came to the conclusion that it was Satan's power and used this logic to try to discredit him with his followers. But Jesus calmly rebuked them, dismantling their argument and letting them know the seriousness of what they were doing by blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Now Jesus' family came to take him away because they were also concerned that he'd lost his mind. They want to take charge of him. Now on the surface of it, it looks like he's being disrespectful of his family, doesn't it? Especially his mother. 
they were trying to help, but probably unknowingly, the effect was to pull him away from his father's business. But from a spiritual standpoint, it can be said that his actions were most honorable. He would not be deterred from doing his father's work. He's saying that God's will supersedes anyone else's, including his own family. There are those instances where one's person, one person's faith journey and belief system might be out of step with family or friends. It can be most challenging, but I'm certain that Jesus doesn't want us to separate from our families. He simply wants us to put him first. And because Jesus stayed true to his father's purpose, his brothers, James and Jude, came around to join his cause for the kingdom. And I'm reminded of a simple command I once read, in all things put God first, because even if you don't, he still is. And that's a powerful thing to keep in mind. Jesus said, who are my brothers and mother? And he looked at his followers and said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. People have found great comfort in their spiritual family. There can be a great spiritual bond with a church family that is different than a bond with your biological family. The love and wisdom they have received from Christ, they can share with you. Each of you here are my brothers and sisters in Christ. This, my church home, has been a wonderful and most important part of my life, and most importantly, my personal spiritual journey. Each one of us here has gifts to share that bring us together and help us to reach out to others. And it is my sincere hope that we can remain bonded in this journey together to continue what I like to call kingdom work. Isn't that what it's all about? Being the hands and feet of Jesus, reaching out to share the love, grace, and mercy to those around us. We all have a part and a responsibility to share whatever gifts we have, even if it's simply our presence. It doesn't mean things are perfect in a spiritual family. Like any typical family, sometimes there are issues to address. And when we act in accordance with the spirit of Christ, with the goal to do his will, then things will be handled appropriately and relationships can grow. In order for the family to thrive, it needs to work together. That is how a healthy family church functions. Living for Jesus isn't always easy. When we face opposition, we need to handle it like Jesus did. Trials in our lives are inevitable, often not easy to deal with. And there can surely be solace in knowing we have our spiritual family to turn to. I'd like to close by saying that it has been a blessing and a privilege to be a part of this wonderful church family, especially now together as the bridge. Every one of you has been a gift in my life. May God bless each and every one of you here today and as we grow together in Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, guide us. Grant us your grace and mercy as we seek to live out your will and be a beacon to others at home, in this place, and in our community, putting you first above all others. Amen. And if you'll stand as able and join in our closing hymn, number 576, Rise Up, O Men of God.
Our Lord Jesus says that whoever does the will of God is his kindred. Go now and serve others as Jesus did. May the steadfast love of God give you hope, the redeeming power of Christ give you courage, the abiding presence of spirit give you strength as you serve the will of God this day and every day.